Atlas, Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to Krypton Report. I am your host, Tyler, and welcome to Krypton Report, a podcast dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl. We're going to look at the Supergirl TV series as well as the Krypton TV series, anything that has to do with the characters in their world. Comics, movies, TV shows. We will talk about everything and anything. We are part of the Southgate Media Group podcasting network. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review to help us get better. You can find me personal at JTY Patrick on Twitter and everything else. We're going to call this episode Catching Up because we've been wanting to do this for a long time and haven't had a chance to do it. So let's just chit chat about some things and get some things out, fluff the air, and we'll go from there. Cool? You guys like it? You dig it? So first of all, we're going to touch back to what happened in San Diego. Um, Let's see. What we know, we got Danny Elfman who's going to score Justice League, which is pretty cool. A little nervous just because, just like with Hans Zimmler being part of BVS, I think someone who's already put their mark on a character with the music to to try to do something along the lines of reintroducing that character. Again, can can be tricky, and uh, we'll see what we get with Elfman, but he's a solid composer, a very um, classic-style composer. So what we get from Justice League should be really, really good. Um, I actually like it better than Junkie XL. He works for some things, but... Um, I think to carry a film and something as iconic as this, uh, he just might not have the chops to do so. There's so many rumors about Ben, uh, but you know what? It's not even almost worth talking about anymore. I, I'm just going to go ahead and say this on here. I'm done with rumors. I might mention something, but I'm not going to jump on every rumor right here because I swear people make up stuff left and right. Ben said he's Batman, and we'll just wait and see. When, you know, Justice League comes out, whatever happens with the Batman, um, there I mean, there was rumors that it wasn't even going to connect to the DCEU, and it's been back and forth. So, um, you know what? Whatever it is, Ben said he was Batman. We'll just leave it at that for now. And moving forward. Uh, some Smallville news. Tom Welling is going to appear on Lucifer Season 3, which is interesting because he's been absent for so long, and apparently at some point in time he was offered a chance to be on Supergirl and didn't. And I talked to our friend James Cole, and we decided like it would be nice for just a quick reference, like a flashback or something, of young Kara. Um, and we saw jor played by Tom Welling. You don't have to be a major, just just that little bit right there would have been cool. Um, We also know that Young Justice Season 3 is in production, and it is entitled The Outsiders. It'll be out in 2018 with the DC streaming service, so that's exciting. Um, Not a whole lot's been given about that. I'm just hoping that we get Wally back, but we'll see. I'm excited. Uh, It's a great show, and definitely going to sign up for that streaming service. Now, moving forward. They did something weird at the DCEU part at Comic-Con. Usually, they'll announce movies, but Warner Brothers has never really been big at what they announced at Comic-Con, so I wasn't expecting a whole lot. But they threw up a bunch of titles, but they gave nothing dates. And that's where it gets tricky, because we have... Now... These are things that are supposedly have been announced. Okay. Are you ready? Shazam, which is supposed to be the next one to go into production, and it's not going to have The Rock who's playing Black Adam. Who knows? Once again, I'm so tired of things. We'll just wait and see. 
Suicide Squad 2, Justice League Dark, Flashpoint, a.k.a. the Flash movie. And with Flashpoint, I really don't think they're going to do Flashpoint the story like people are saying. Think of how they did Flashpoint on TV. Think about how they did, quote-unquote, Civil War. Marvel did. It's just a title. It grabs people's attention. They'll throw in an element or so there. But I really don't think it's going to be this massive DC reboot that some people are thinking. We got Wonder Woman 2, which has a date for December of 2019 now. Um, We still have talks of Green Lantern Corps, Batgirl, and The Batman. Now, movies that have been mentioned at some point that weren't shown at Comic-Con, Black Adam, Gotham City Sirens, the Harley vs. Joker, wherever that came from, that seemed like up here, then fade. Now we have a Joker origin, which we'll touch on soon. Cyborg, Nightwing, Justice League 2, and Man of Steel 2. Now with Man of Steel 2, I have a theory. The theory basically is that they're holding off any information about Man of Steel 2 until uh, after Justice League because they kind of want to keep it like he's dead. As much as possible, they're going to keep it on the down low that Superman is dead. And um, I think after Justice League, we'll get a big Man of Steel 2 announcement. But there's no date range. There's no... um, The Black Adam thing is weird. There was... Um, you know, we know Patty Jenkins is doing Wonder Woman 2. Matt Reeves is doing The Batman and wants to do with a noir take. Um, there was a rumor of looking for John Krasinski for Green Arrow, which would be pretty cool, I guess. Um, the, some were saying that Gotham City Sirens was going to be turned into Birds of Prey. And, well, I mean, that's all rumors. Like I said, I'm not going to touch a lot on rumors, but here's one thing. Um, We do know that David Sandberg, who directed Annabelle Creation, is going to be directing Shazam. And to me, that's kind of weird. Like, I think the guy's a good director. Don't get me wrong. But to me, he would be the one I'd be like, hey, dude, dude, go make Justice League Dark. Let's let's, let's amp up that action and that creep factor. Let's make Justice League Dark. Because then you're taking your DC property and you have like, your oh, this is your DC action. This is your DC horror. But whatever. We'll see how it plays out. There was recently an announcement that made that Martin Scorsese with Todd Phillips, yes, the guy who directed Old School and The Hangover, we're going to do a Joker origin film. Okay. I would like that if they went more of the idea of killing joke where we'll get this film set up we'll get like at the beginning the joker or something something that's all in flashbacks and then at the end the joker basically says something about well that's one of the ways that i prefer to think about my past or i like that way better something that doesn't solidify that that is his origin but could be because one of the things about the joker is the mystique and the mysterious side that's what keeps the character interesting it also makes him more creepy, as we, we don't know. And, you know, in more recent ways, the Joker has been looked at and stated more as an idea than just a character. So, um, but what do you think? Um, let me keep going. Uh, but I don't know. The other thing was they announced that with that film... Um, that DC was looking at the idea of doing movies that are separate outside of the DCEU. And I gotta say, as much as I want to see more movies and more stories, that's great. I think you're working against each other. Now, if you kind of run the DCEU, and then when that's done, you go back to standalone films that don't connect, okay. Um, That's fine. You know, that's, it'll help keep your brand good because it's a good, solid brand, but it won't oversaturate the market. But also, you know, right now I have a two-year-old son, and he can get the concept of this is TV Flash. 
this is big screen flash. Um, but if I have to explain, okay, this is movie flash that's with just Superman and Batman. This is movie flash that's not. And with the way these characters have strong stories that for the random film goer to be like, wait, why isn't Superman appearing in with this flash or who's this Superman? I thought, I don't understand. It would be very confusing. I mean, you can still do standalone films if you want of characters. They don't have to super be in each other's face connected. I mean, a, a reference here or there makes them connected. Um, I mean, think about Suicide Squad's connected, but it wasn't really hinging on any other film that came before. Even Wonder Woman was a standalone. I mean, you have the opening and ending scenes of Diana in modern time, but without that, it's, it's a standalone film. So moving on. We're going to jump real quick to, we got the same trailer that we had before for Krypton, but this time it now said 2008. And I have a, a, a statement here about the TV show that um, Jeff Johns hosted the Krypton panel at San Diego Comic-Con. He revealed that the show will be more than just a history lesson on Krypton's past. It's a show that, although it takes place centuries ago in Krypton about the House of El, it's about a conspiracy from the present that will travel back in time to Krypton to prevent Superman's legacy from ever happening. Okay. I mean, I mean, come on. Jeff Jones is telling us this. I'm definitely in. Adam Strange and Hawk Woman come to Krypton trying to stop the conspiracy and save Superman's legacy. Jones revealed Doomsday will be in the show. Brainiac is long overdue on the screen. We've been keeping that under wraps, said executive producer. He has a finally a really deep, rich history. He's the nexus point man in a machine. Awesome. 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 See, this is the stuff that I'm interested in with Krypton. I mean, because this has kind of been a show that when it was announced, I mean, it was announced back in, what, 2013? The same time they talked about Gotham, and then Gotham's on season four now? And Krypton's not even started, and it's supposed to be technically in the DCEU, so it's supposed to be for Man of Steel. Um, so it's it's kind of like, oh, okay. We're going to meet Segel, Jor-El's father, who ta- whose task was saving not only his future family, but also his present. Excuse me. Which... Um, you know, the pilot is written by David Goyer with Ian Goldberg, who's done Once Upon a Time, Terminator, the, the, Sarah, Chronic, the Sarah Connors Chronicles. Goyer also acts as executive producer through his company, Phantom 4. Now, that's awesome. But one thing I was kind of curious about um, was, you know, there, there was a prequel comic, and we actually have a video on our YouTube page about Supergirl that was supposed to be in canon continuity with Man of Steel about Kara. Will that still count? Who knows? But I am pretty excited, so we'll see. Now, we're jumping back. Sad news. I mean, Joss Whedon has taken over from director Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder shot the entire film, and Whedon was taking over to do reshoots, which reshoots are a common Hollywood practice. Just it's never quite something on the scale where you have such a prominent director taking over for another prominent director. And we know that Whedon has had a lighter touch and has reshot some scenes. that They wanted to change some things with Cyborg, and I believe they changed the ending. And, he, and for all we know, it could have been an ending... That could have been just um, a little bit more of a cliffhanger. They wanted to more closed off or something because originally it was intended to be Justice League Part 1. You know, we, we don't know after they had shot what, when they shot and what they shot and what decisions were made. So the film was to be credited as a Snyder Whedon film. Um, if you look back, it, the, a film must be so much percentage shot by a director to be considered his film, a good example is um, Superman 2. If you go back, Richard Lester reshot a lot of the same scenes that Richard Donner had already shot just so that he could credit himself as sole director, even though there are a lot of shots left in the film that are Richard Donner's. 
Uh, if you ever have a chance, watch the Superman two and the Superman two Richard Donner cut, and you'll 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 see what I'm talking about. Um, and you know what, I'm I'm okay with that. Like you know what, Snyder had a tragedy, and I'm okay with it because the man needed to sit down and take care of his family, and I think people should respect that more um, than what they're what they're giving him right now. And it's it's hard uh, in some ways to step down on something you've been working towards, and but uh, you know what. I'm still really excited to see Justice League. I'm excited as I was the day it was announced. Now, we're going to talk about, we got the last big chunk that we're going to talk about, because we talked about Supergirl Season 3 with James Cole, is the trailer. Now, we did get to see Steppenwolf in this trailer. I'm going to read you this quick breakdown if you're sure if you're not sure who Steppenwolf is. As one of the new gods, Steppenwolf, which is German for wolf, of the steppe or coyote, is the younger brother of Hegra and the uncle of Darkseid. He is also a member of Darkseid's elite. He leads the military of Apocalypse and also rides a hover bike. Uh, with that hover bike is made with the same technology as Orion's, and that would be kind of cool if we saw a new one from New Genesis, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Stamp and Wolf made a cameo appearance as a hologram in the Ultimate Edition of Batman v Superman. You can also find that clip on YouTube in which he communicates with Lex Luthor through Kryptonian hologram technology, and he's holding three mother boxes. First of all, I like the idea of Steppenwolf being the bad guy. At first, I was like, dang. But the idea is, with a bad guy like that that you really don't know much about as your villain, it, get, it allows you to do a couple of things. One, you can do anything you want with the character because there's not a whole lot known about the character. Two... You can focus a lot more time on your heroes and not your villain because no one really cares about the villain as far as a character. When you do a movie like The Dark Knight and you have the Joker, people want to see the Joker. They don't always just want to see the Joker with Batman. You can, they want Joker scenes. Same thing with Suicide Squad. We want Joker scenes. But with Steppenwolf, you're like, eh, just have him fight. So without further ado, we discuss the newest Justice League trailer. Now, what I did was I've watched this trailer a lot. Some might call me obsessed, and I call it, I like this stuff, and yeah, I'm obsessed. But what I did was I threw it in my iMovie here, and I slowed it down so I could watch it in a very slow motion to catch frame by frame by frame. And things, you know, that are, are shown in there. We get to see Steppenwolf. We see what a boom tube looks like. We see um, a lot more action, but we see other scenes that are around. What we've already seen from others. Um, most of the footage is new. There's very few parts that we had seen in the previous two trailers, which, which is really exciting, because usually, you know, you get new clips, but not really new uh, sound footage. I feel like this is the big trailer. And then we might get one more. It's kind of like a smaller um, trailer and the TV spots are coming here soon. We, there is a green light that's spotted in one scene that people are theorizing that is a green lantern. Um, there's a lot of talk at the end of the trailer of the Alfred when he says um, you know, let's hope you're not too late. And everyone's like, oh, it's Superman that Alfred's talking to. You know, it might be. I also think it might be Aquaman. I say that because there are scenes where we know that Bruce talks to Aquaman and he rejects Bruce. Diana asks him. Also, there are scenes in the film where it looks like there's the team fighting without him. So, you know, he seems like he's more of the reluctant one to join and be a part of things. Uh... You know, I think the Green Lantern's a stretch. I think it'd be cool if Green Lantern would show up. I'm completely okay with that. But I don't think Alfred would know anything. I mean, the, in the trailer, Steppenwolf does say no lanterns. And one thing about Steppenwolf and the New Gods in the comics is they exist outside of the DC multiverse. So there's only one Steppenwolf. There's only one dark side compared to there's multiple of the other characters. Um, that's an important thing when you look at the dialogue where Steppenwolf mentions the other worlds of Fallen. 
And there's a really cool storyline in the New 52 where basically Darkseid's going Earth to Earth killing Superman because Superman can stop him. And when he gets to Earth 52 is when the Justice League forms. And if you don't have time to read it, just watch Justice League War. It's a really good uh, version of that story. There's a few changes to it, of course. But there's a it's it's a good story. And that's a big deal because you have the, the line, like I said, in this trailer of no Kryptonian, no lanterns. So it means that they've dealt with them before. But, I mean, other than that, the trailer is amazing. You know, if I had time and I had someone to talk with besides myself, we could go into it and go point by point. But you have to watch the trailers. I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably have. And, you know, those are just some things that I've picked out. Um, the, the Amazon battle with uh, Apocalypse, I'm very curious when that takes place. Just looking at the timeline that was established in Wonder Woman. Um, it would be kind of neat, maybe, if in Wonder Woman there had been a hint at maybe one of Darkseid's other minions, Decide, Granny, Goodness, um, coming and, you know, basically making the the gods of that time rebel. <laughs> and um, But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But this is, like I said, kind of us catching up on some overdue discussions. Um, what are your thoughts? Remember, you can always uh, message us here. And we look forward to this season of Supergirl, season three. Uh, we look forward to Justice League. And uh, upcoming episodes. we got a really cool one coming up. So remember, look up in the sky. And remember, you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, please leave us a review to help us get better. If you're an Amazon shopper, just remember you can go to southgatemediagroup.com. There's a portal log into Amazon, and you'll shop into your account just regular, but it also helps keep all the podcasts on and helps keep Southgate running. Remember, look up in the sky.